Next fly we're going to work with is a dry fly. It's called a stimulator. And it's an attractor kind of fly. It's not meant to really represent any one fly, uh, but to get the attention of it. It was invented by a guy named Randall Kaufman uh, out in the Montana, Wyoming area. So what I'm using here is, is the size 12 Kershank nymph hook. You could do a regular dry fly hook or nymph hook if you want. I made this a little bigger so it could be visible a little more. And I just laid my thread bed down. And the first thing I want to do, we're going to we're going to make a deer hair um, tail. So I'm just taking my deer hair and I'm getting it prepared to stack. Getting all the fluffy stuff out. And then I want a, a fair size tail for this hook. This size. And this one I'm going to tie in going backwards, so I'm going to take it out this way. Okay, and I'm going to have a tail that's maybe about a third of the hook shank, maybe a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to come in, increasing the pressure a little bit as I go. Then what I do with it is get the deer here so it's laying down. And I can control it. And I'm just going to go and wrap that right around the hook itself, the shank. So I'm making kind of an underbody. And I want that up about by the thorax area, no more. And then I like to come back and just smooth it out a little bit so it's fairly even, maybe tapered a little bit towards the thorax. And I'm going to take all this stuff off, and if it spins around a little bit, doesn't matter, that's fine. And I want that real short because I want as much of the hook available as possible. And if you notice, I'm winding it towards me as I go around. And the reason I do that is that that's the way that the line of the thread goes on so I don't accidentally unwind it. So we're going to trim this up pretty well. Okay. And then I'm just going to put a little extra on it to secure it in. Okay. Now I do it a little bit differently than some people do because we're going to we're going to wrap some uh, hackle up this. And a lot of guys will start with a hackle tip in the back and wrap it forward. I don't like doing that. I like to wrap it backwards. I can never get the hackle to come out right. So what I'm going to do is make a little tag that I can use. Now I've just taken some thread and I'm going to bring that to the back here and tie it in. Okay. And then I'm going to clip one or the other so I have something to work with a little later. Okay. So now we have the tail put on. We have the, the deer hair underbody put on. I'm going to try to get my thread out of the way a little bit. And then I'm going to use some kind of dubbing for the body. The idea with this fly is to have a lot of contrast. At least that's the way I like it. So you want to mix the colors up a little bit. So your head will be maybe a totally different color than the body. And I'm just going to use some uh, uh, dubbing here, some amber kind of colored dubbing. This is actually sulfur orange. And I'm going to put it on, maybe not as tight as we used with some of the flies tonight. Just because uh, so, I want this body a little bit thick. And then I'm just going to dub the body with the next wrap just touching the previous wrap and hopefully I'll come out something like that. So we've got our tail on, we've got our underbody of deer hair and we've got our, uh, our uh, dubbing on for the body. Okay. Then I'm going to take a feather, whatever color you want to use, and you don't want it too big or too small so I'm just going to, this one will be pretty close. And we're going to set it up to tie on. We don't really post this. We're going to tie it around the shank. 
So I'm going to take the really long stuff off so I can control the length a little bit. And just make a section that I can tie on. Again, I'm going to put the top of the feather back towards me. Or straight on top of the fly. Either way will work. And I'm going to tie that in real well. Make sure that hopefully doesn't And then work. I want to uh, wrap this around with a little space. So that hopefully the feathers are kind of pointing backwards. That's why I want the top of the feather towards me so I can wrap it like that. And I bring that back down right back by the, uh, the tie-in for the deer here. Make the spacing so that your body will show. Okay. Now I'm going to try to hold that without releasing it. I'm going to take my thread that I created and I'm going to wrap that around to hold the feather. Two or three wraps right around the base of that body. Maybe three good wraps. That's why you want a little bit of a tag, six, eight inches long. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to work it up towards the top to help secure the feather down. Okay, notice I'm moving it back and forth a little bit because I don't want to trap any more uh, with the feather flat than I can help. So this is hopefully getting right down by the stem, which is next to the dubbing. Now if you want to, you can use like an orange thread or something if you want more color to it. I'm just using the brown thread that I have here. Okay, then I'm going to secure that down. Couple wraps forward, bring it back, secure it in, and double wrap it like that. I'm done with this, and I'm done with the feather. Okay, I could have wrapped the body forward just a little bit more. But now we have the tail on, we have the body on, and we have our feather on. Okay, now um, what we want to do with, with it next is we're going to use another hank of deer here. And we're going to create the wing over the back of the fly. And for this, I'm going to use about the same amount of, of uh, deer hair, maybe about like that. I'm going to clean it up like we did before. Get all that fuzz out. And I'm going to put it in tips first. Tap it down. Bring it out so it's pointing backwards. Need be, you can clean that up a little bit. I think I've got just about the right amount I'm going to want. So I'm going to want a fairly healthy wing with it, and it's going to come back. The tips I try to put back about the middle of the tail, somewhere covering the body. Because when you tie this on, it's going to cinch it forward just a little bit. So I'm going to get a good grip on that. Do my pinch wrap and put it right by the body. A couple light ones and pull down. Three or four wraps, so you get a nice wing up like that. Okay, and I'm going to take this front off and clip it off, as short as I can get it, without cutting my thread, hopefully. But what you'll have is a little bit of deer hair left on the front, in the tie-in area here. And that's fine, that's what you want. Because we're going to take and I'm going to kind of cut it at an angle. And trim that up real good so you know your eye's not going to get clouded, uh, crowded. And if you're close, just go in and nip a little more of that hair off right by the eye. Okay. That's a little too much here. Want to get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. So we have our tail, we have our body, we have our, our ribbing feather, we've got our wing on. And now I'm going to start back where I tied it in. And I'm going to use my fingers to help guide the thread and move it forward. Because what I want to get is a slope to it. 
I thought maybe it went the next one. Right down well, behind the eye. Could, um, and capture as much of that as you can. Um, so we can always get back to the, the next Okay, you see how it's kind of going this way? That's what we're looking for. Um, if you nice get some get feathers the over the eye, you can go in and try to the capture them. Are fairly straightforward. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. So now we've got this little slant going, thicker by the wing, narrow at the eye. Uh, now what we're going to do is tie in uh, another small feather. We want it smaller than the one before because we're just working with the head area. So I'm going to go down on the pelt here a little bit, or the, the cape. Pick out something I think might be about the right, right height. Trim it off, set it up just like you did the other feather. Put the back towards you, the top of the feather towards you. We're going to tie that in right over that that uh, sloping area on the front. So I just tied it in here and right on top of the, the thread. Now I'm going to use a different color of dubbing. We don't need a lot because we have a small area to deal with. This is probably going to be about enough. Okay. I'm going to wrap that on, make a noodle, real thin. <laughs> Starting at the top by the wing. I'm going to make a head. Okay, I probably need just a touch more. It's a little short. Nice and tight. And I want to end up just short of the eye where I'm going to do my tie-in. And then I'm going to take that feather and wrap it around. Similar to the way I did the body. I'm going to make a collar here. And this small of a hook, probably just one more wrap around it so that some of the color of the head is showing. And tie that off. Okay, if you notice, I tied that on the side of the eye, and the reason I did that was to try to keep material out of the eye. Snip it. Whip finish it. Take your thread off, you've got a little straggler out there. Give it the pinky test if you can see your finger through it. You're probably open enough. Head cement your thread a little bit. And that's your stimulator. And this thing will float pretty high in the water. It's going to really float kind of like this. So that your head hackle, you want that a little smaller than the body. So we have the tail of deer hair. We have the underbody of deer hair. We have the overbody of some dubby. We took the feather and tied it in and worked it backwards and secured it with the tag. Worked the tag up over the feather a little bit. Then we put the wing on it to the length we want. Then we put a little bit of, uh, secured that down in front and made that kind of a cone shape. A little bit of, uh, put the feather on for the head, a little bit of dubbing, wrap the feather. That's a stimulator. And if you can, time down as small as a size 16 or even 18. And the reason I like the Kershank Nymph hook is it gives that little bit of a curvature look to it. And I've got some, uh, the gap is real good here. That deer here won't interfere with anything. Okay, let's go try one.